Okay, so we're ready to load a USB drive into the machine slot right there. So go ahead and load the USB drive and you'll press the file button and the file button will show a menu and on that menu you'll see highlighted in blue it says read memory file. So we'll toggle down one to the U disk and that signifies USB disk and hit enter and then we can go ahead and hit enter again and that will read the USB files on the disk and I have two of them here uh, which are basically the same file. I just uh, put the same file on there twice. So we'll go ahead and toggle over one to read U-Disk file and toggle down one with the down arrow button and select copy to memory and hit the enter button. And that'll save that file to the machine memory. We can hit enter again and choose more files from the USB or press escape to return to the machine memory. So now that file is on the machine and you can notice that it is uh, reversed and so we need to fix that and it's an easy fix. You'll see that the the file itself is showing up on the screen there kind of in reverse. So what you want to do here is go ahead and use, the, go ahead and hit enter and you can see where now if we were to look at the file it won't necessarily print wrong it just is showing up wrong on the screen display so let's go ahead and press the ZU button once and we will toggle down the entire menu we'll press the down arrow button there and go all the way down the menu and it'll go to the other side and we'll pick screen origin and we'll go ahead and hit enter and press the enter button and you'll see a choice up here highlighted in blue where it says screen origin is set to the top left well we need to change that to the top right so we'll go ahead and use the left arrow key and that'll switch that over to the top right use that left arrow key and once we do that we can go ahead and hit the enter button again and then escape button a couple of times will just escape out of that menu. You can probably have to press it a couple of times and that'll reset back to the default menu after we get out of there. So I pressed that three times and that sort of cleared everything. So now we can go ahead and press the file button again and there's our file and it looks correct there. So we'll go ahead and hit enter again to actually activate and choose that file. And now it shows up correctly on the screen display. So from time to time you might run into that. So here's what we should do. Let's place some material on the bed and use the autofocus function to focus the laser beam for perfect cuts or engravings. And we'll need to lower the bed to accommodate some stock like this uh, two by four. So it's just a standard test piece of two by four. So we'll go ahead and press the ZU button once and it'll be set to the Z move. And now we can lower the bed by using the right arrow button. So we'll go ahead and press and hold down that right arrow button and that'll lower the bed enough to clear the material. So let's lower it down and then We'll go ahead and press escape to return to the default menu. And then we're going to position the material under the laser nozzle. So just make sure that everything is kind of centered there under the laser nozzle. And then we'll press the ZU button again and toggle with the down arrow key all the way down to the auto focus selection. So go to autofocus and there it is it's highlighted and we'll go ahead and press enter and the bed will raise up and it'll touch that sensor on the autofocus sensor and then lower down slightly uh, to give it the correct point of focus and you can use the supplied depth gauge to check that the autofocus sensor is setting the nozzle to the correct height so you can just take that piece of plastic and essentially just put it up underneath there 
and make sure that that is sort of the distance between the bottom of that autofocus uh, mechanism and the material. So if you have clearance there, that is typically the, the right clearance. And you can see it here from a different angle. So you'll have, and that's essentially where that autofocus head, and make sure that those screws are tight and that that auto head uh, focus piece isn't moving. So if you press the pulse button manually once, you'll see it fire the laser beam. And you can use this to check the strength or make simple manual cuts if you need. So if you press the button once and let up, you'll notice that it'll shoot that laser beam onto the surface of the material. And then when pressed, the pulse button fires the beam. You can press and release that button in short bursts or press and hold while using the arrow keys to move the nozzle over the surface of the material. And this can sometimes help you make quick cuts on material where you don't have to set up an actual cut program. So we're now ready to run a file. So go ahead and press the file button. And there's our Laguna file. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And there it is, it's showing up. And in this case, I'll go ahead and hit the frame button just to, to frame out our project and see if see where it's going to uh, cut or engrave on that. And a lot of times you'll see a message that says XY slop over. Continue, press enter, or cancel, press escape. Now this XY slop over has more to do with the, the table area and where the last origin was set, which is that red dot. Now in framing, if the origin was last set to say an upper corner, and the file doesn't have enough room, the gantry can't move over the entire file, you'll see the XY slop over. And in this case, you can see where if that origin is set in the wrong place, then we will need to set a new machine origin for the current file, which is really easy. Okay, so currently I don't know exactly where the origin is set for the machine origin. So it could be in the back, it could be in the front, could be all the way over on this side. We're not sure. So we're going to set an origin to the center of our material. And in order to do that, we'll have to hit the escape button a couple of times. Um, you'll notice that you can't really move anything until we do hit escape. So we'll go ahead and hit escape a couple, two or three times, and it should move at some point it'll go back to its home position and now we can toggle that around by just hitting the uh, left or right arrow keys forward and we'll bring the toggle that over into the center of the material and sort of find a nice center point there where we think that that file can cut or etch so we'll go ahead and choose kind of the center right there and then We'll go ahead and, and press the origin button. And when you press the origin button, that will now set the origin to the center. And if we hit frame, you'll see where it's going to frame that etching that we're going to do. And in this case, it's overshooting the wood a little bit. So I think we might switch up to a little bit larger piece of stock. So I'll just put another piece of two by four in there. And this is just a test. Um, this is an etching of our logo. And we are ready almost. So we'll hit frame again and see that it framed everything out correctly. And now we can just press the start button and that will run the file. So we'll go ahead and hit the start button and there it goes. So we'll speed this up a little bit. Um, this is just etching. Uh, this file is a uh, just a logo file and it's just burning that onto the wood and uh, just a basic test. So you can see where the grain is is affecting that burn a little bit and there it is. So we successfully tested a file and you can see it came out nice and now we can do adjustments from there but that will get you started on running your first file. So stay tuned and we'll have more on using the controller and files uh, coming up.